about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to homicide detail. The owner of a fur store has been shot and killed. Your only lead, a missing fur coat. The killer is at large. Your job, get him. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, Fatima is the king-size cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild. To give Fatima a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all, long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Saturday, November 23rd. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Ben Romero. Boss is Blaine Steed, captain of homicide. My name's Friday. It was 6.35 p.m. and we got to the corner of Western and Lexington. The Western Fur Shop. Hi, Brennan. Hi. What happened, Frank? The owner's been shot. His name's Albert Carver. Yeah. Who is that? Mrs. Carver. Haven't been able to get anything out of her. Where's the body? In the back. Munkers is back there. Did you call the lab? Yeah. Jones on his way. Photographer and fingerprint men with him. All right, let's take a look. Nothing seems to be messed up. Back room is. It was a small shop. A couple of fur coats on dummies on one side of the store. and On the other, a tall glass case holding about 15 more. Mrs. Kreiber sat on a straight back chair staring at the floor. We went through the curtains into the back room of the store. Sprawled out on the floor at the far end of the room was the body of a man. He had a fur coat gripped in one hand. Sergeant Monkreese from Hollywood Division was standing by. What do you figure, Monk? Looks like a couple of hours. Did you call the coroner? Yeah. How long have you been here, Monk? Just a couple of minutes. You think Miss Kreiber moved anything here? I don't think so. She was sitting in that chair when we got here. I don't think she's moved except to call in. Did she put in the call? Yeah. Empty shells on the floor. You got a pencil? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 32. Yeah. You think robbery? I don't know. Let's talk to the wife. Wait a minute. Bottle here. Uh, Sierra Valley Wine Company. World's finest muscatel. 27 cents a pint. Nobody touched this today. No, I've been here. No. Okay. Let's get out the front. Anything in the customer files, Brennan? Not so far. Have you tried to talk to Miss Kreiber again? No, pretty bad. No, let's give it a try. Miss Kreiber? I'm Sergeant Friday. This is Sergeant Romero. We'd like to talk to you if we could. We know how you must feel, but there are a few questions that we have to ask you. Did you telephone the police? We have to know how it happened, Miss Kreiber. Miss Kreiber? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what happened? Mm -hmm. oh, who is that? What do you want? We're police officers. Oh. Albert. Albert dead. Albert! Someone call the police? Miss Grabber, we are the police. My husband's been murdered. He's dead. 
I better leave her. Yeah. Friday. Hmm? Here's something I found in the customer file. Mm-hmm. Miss Terry Shepard, 10113 Normandy, apartment 3. What about it? She took her coat out that was in storage. Took it out today. Well, we'll check her out when we're finished here. Thanks. Looks like the only hot receipt in the file. Mm-hmm. Hi, Lee. Yeah. Yeah. In the back room. What is it? Chilling. Mercury's will show you. Okay. Think we ought to try the wife again? I can try. <laughs> Miss Triber, can we do anything for you? Oh. I'm a little better. I... I'll try to tell you what I can. All right. When did you get here? It must have been about six o'clock, a few minutes after. I came to take him home. Any customers around? No, the store was empty. I stood here for a few minutes waiting, and, and I went in the back and... <laughs> yes, so... Is the front door open? No. Yes, the front door? Yes, ma'am, the front Yes, open. Did you telephone the police? I I think I did. Did you come here to pick him up? No. No, usually he drives home himself. I came down on the streetcar to ride home with him. What kind of a car do you have? An Oldsmobile. 1939. 40, I guess it is. Huh? Where does he usually park? In the rear of the store. This little place that... I'll take a look. All right. Where is your home? 3412 Northwestern. I thought there was something wrong when I, I got a telegram from him. He said not to come down tonight. He said he'd be home late. What time is that? About four o'clock. Well, I, I'm all mixed up. I, I haven't told it to you as I remember it. First, yes, at first I telephoned here to the shop. That was this afternoon? Yes, 3.30. I'm sure of that because I, I made some other calls. I spoke to Albert. He didn't say he was going to be late. Then at 4 o'clock, I received a telegram. Do you have that with you? Yes, it's in my purse somewhere. 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 Oh, here it is. All right. Thank you. Don't come down. I won't be home until late. I have to see a customer, Albert. Can I keep this? We'll return it to you. Yes. What'd you do after you got this wire, Miss Primer? Well, well, nothing. I, I thought it was strange, but I didn't think too much about it. Then I, I started wondering why he didn't say anything over the telephone about being late. So, well, I came down here on the streetcar. Did you phone the store just before you left your house? Yeah, but there was no answer. Mm-hmm. Parking lot's empty. Better get out an APB in the car, huh? Miss Cryber, you said your car was a 1939 or 40 Oldsmobile, didn't you? 1940, I remember now. What model is that? Oh, sedan, light blue. Do you remember the license number? Well, I have it on this chain with the extra keys. Uh, here it is, on this little tag. The veterans make these. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Joe, can I see him now? Sure. Excuse me, Miss Kramer. Do, do you want me to wait? I, I'd like to go home. We'd like you to wait for a little while, yes. Do you have any relatives living here? A niece and a nephew in Beverly Hills. Jerome Reed. They live on Cannon Drive. All right, we'll call them for you. Thank you. Lee, is this phone out here all right to handle? Yeah, it's been dusted. Okay. Joe, you coming in? Yeah, right away. It's pretty clear. Easy to trace. Mm-hmm. I'd say he was standing over here by the curtains when he was shot. That's where the stains begin. Mm-hmm. And he must have stumbled along this glass case. You can see the smears here in the glass where he tried to grab hold of something. Yeah. And I guess he caught hold of that first coat and pulled it down on it. Mm-hmm. And he stumbled and bumped up against this coat bag, fell through that and up against the safe. How many times was he hit? Six empty casings on the floor. Looks like four through-and-through through wounds. Thirty-two, huh? That's right. 
the wife know if anything's missing? Uh, she's in pretty bad shape. It looks to me like somebody took his wristwatch and a ring from his left hand. He had a billfold. That's gone. No coat. All the trouser pockets are turned inside out. And what about that wine bottle? It's smeared. Can't lift a thing. Okay. Thanks. Ben? Still on the phone. Okay. No, no, no. License 15, Boston. 6707. No, 707. Yeah. Driver might be on. Hang on a minute, Wallace. What? Now, give that DMV, will you? Save another call. Uh, Ms. Kreiber, did your husband have a wallet? Yes. Yes, brown alligator. Did he keep his identification in it? Yes. Did he carry much cash? No, just a few dollars. He was always afraid of holdups. Thank you. You want to give that to him, Ben? Yeah, okay. Hey, Wallace. Suspect might have a brown alligator wallet with identification cards of Albert Kreiber. Yeah, that's C-R-I-B, Boston, B, Boston, New York. 3412 Northwestern Avenue. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Buck. Hello? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Monk? Invoice from a far north fur company. Three men coach delivered here today. I looked all around. I only found two, one missing. Did you find the sales slip for the other one? No. Ms. Kreiber, would you come over here, please? Yes. Where are they, Mark? Over here. All right. Over this way. Well, these are mink coats here, aren't they? Yes. It's wild mink. Albert told me he ordered them. Yes, ma'am. We found the invoice. He ordered three. There are only two here. Do you know anything about any of his customers? No. No, I don't. I never met any of them. Oh, I remember now. Just the night before last, he called someone from home. Told her he had some minks in today and she could come in and look them over. Do you know who that was? I, I didn't hear any name. Miss Scriber, do you have any idea who might have wanted to shoot your husband? No, none at all. He was friendly with everyone. Everybody liked Albert. He didn't run around. He... He was either working or at home. Did he drink? Not at all. No, I mean beer, a little wine, no, maybe? No, 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 he never touched anything. All right, thank you. Brennan, will you see that Ms. Kreiber gets to her nephews? Right away. Thank you. Might as well go, Ben. Yeah. We can talk to some of the neighbors. Six shots by him. Wonder why nobody heard him. Pretty heavy traffic outside, huh? Somebody wanted a mink coat pretty bad. coat like that costs quite a bit, doesn't it? This one's going to come a little high. Yeah. Seven oh five p.m. Most of the stores along the street were closed, but a small shoe repair shop across the street was open, so we went over there. On the window was one word, Pete, and a picture of a shoe. Sitting in the window was a small, dark man wearing a leather apron. He was working on a pair of shoes. Hello. We're police officers. I see you drive up across the street. Are you Pete? Sure. Uh, what happens to Mr. Kreiber? He's robbed? No, he was killed. No. Shot? I do not hear anything. Have you been sitting in your window all afternoon? Oh, most all the time. You see, I have machinery here. I advertise that way. People watch me. Mm-hmm. Do you remember seeing anybody going into Mr. Kreiber's this afternoon? This afternoon before, man. Uh, two, three, long black cars. Uh-huh. Anybody else? Uh, some. Were they women? Officer, they are all women. I see. Did any of them walk out with a new fur coat? Uh, they're all up. I do not see all of them, I guess, but I see two. Can you describe them? Uh, one beautiful young girl, tall... Red hair. She walk out with a big package. What time was that? Three, four o'clock. Uh, the second woman is about the same time. Funny thing. I do not see the bottle, but Benny from liquor store and corner tell me the second one, the blonde. She buys bottle of wine. Did he tell you what kind? No. Reason I remember, I laugh when he tell me. I go over to Benny's for a can of beer. Uh, he tells me she buys cheap wine, walks out of Kreiber's with new fur coat. <laughs> Me, I spend five dollars for good wine, and my wife has no fur coat. How old was this blonde? How was she dressed? Uh, she's maybe 25. 
Young, you know, not too young, but young. She has on slacks, a uh, gray. Mm-hmm. What kind of a fur coat was she wearing when she came out? Mink. Look from here like mink. I see. Did you notice where she went? Mm. The blonde, the gray slacks, mink coat. Yes, it turned the corner onto Lexington and she went up the street. Did you see Mr. Carver's car drive away? No, he parked in back. I don't see him come in. I don't see him come out. All right. Thanks a lot, Pete. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, officer, uh, that blonde... Something wrong there. How do you mean? Well, she has got fur coat, but she drinks wrong wine. I don't understand. Why do you say that? $5,000 coat, 27-cent wine. 7.45 p.m. Ben and I questioned Benny Davis at the safety liquor store. He remembered the blonde and said she bought a bottle of Sierra Valley Muscatel from him between 2.30 and 3 o'clock that afternoon. He'd never seen her before. We contacted communications and gave a description of the blonde to supplement the all-points bulletin. Then we started checking Western Union offices to find out where Mrs. Kriber's telegram had been sent from. We finally traced it to the office at Normandy and Hollywood Boulevard. The operator who sent the telegram to Mrs. Kriber also remembered receiving the call. She told us that the person who phoned in the message was a woman. The time, 3.22 p.m. We asked her to put a tracer on it and told her we'd check back. 8.24 p.m., Ben and I went to 10113 Normandy to talk to Miss Terry Shepard, whose name had appeared in the customer files at the first store. The receipt showed she had taken a coat out of storage that afternoon. This is something like the place the wife and I used to live in. Well, the same people must have built it. Apartment 3. Miss Terry Shepard. All right, come in. The door's open. Find yourself a seat, Fred. I'll be in a minute. Police officers, Miss Shepard. Oh? What's wrong? We'd like to talk to you. What about? What if you could come out here, please? Well, I just got out of the car. You'll have to wait a minute. Yeah? Yeah, this place has got the same floor plan as mine. Huh? Kind of small, isn't it? Mm, not too bad. I wonder what rent she paid. Uh, you don't mind if I wait until we leave my haircut? It's all right. We're sorry to bother you. What can I do for you? You got a fur coat, Miss Shepard? Yeah, sure. I wonder if we could see it, please. Sure, but I don't think it'll trail you. It's only muskrat. I bought it in Pittsburgh. Where is it, McLaughlin? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, down the hallway, first door on the right. I think I know where it is. What's this all about, Lieutenant? What time were you at the Western Fur Shop today? Oh, I'd say 3 o'clock. Why? What'd you do while you were down there? I got my coat out of Hawk. I had it there during the warm weather. Paid the man, signed something, and uh, he put the coat in the box, and I took it. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you know Mr. Kreiber down there, the man that owns the store? You got me. The man was about 50. His hair was a little gray. I hardly even looked at him. This is the only fur coat, Joe. Could have passed for mink when I first bought it. Pretty sad now, isn't it? Not mink. I'll give that closet a last check. What happened? Did somebody steal a coat? Was anybody else in the store when you were there? Yeah. Yeah, there was another girl there. What was she doing? Nothing, just sitting. Do you remember how she was dressed? Oh... She was wearing a gray suit, black, blonde. Her face wasn't much, but she had a neat little figure. Do you remember anything else about her? Well, I didn't pay that much attention. Anything else in there, Ben? Not a thing, Joe. Maybe I'd better take this towel off my head. It doesn't look so hot when it's wet, but it's natural. Natural red. Yeah. Is there anything else that you might be able to tell us? Mm, I think that's about all. I gave a man my claim check and the money... And he got the coat and put it in a box and gave me a receipt. Mm-hmm. Nothing else? No. Well, when I got the receipt, I saw the blonde walk over and pick up the telephone. I was just leaving then. Did you hear any of the conversation? She asked for Western Union. You are listening to Dragnet. The Case History of a Police Investigation, presented in the public interest by Fatima Cigarettes. If you smoke a long cigarette, it will be in your interest to listen to a typical case history of a Fatima smoker. It's the case of Edith Gwynn, well-known Los Angeles columnist. This is her actual signed statement. It's my job to keep up with what's going on around town. And here's one thing I've noticed lately. More and more people smoking Fatima. You certainly can tell why once you smoke them. I found them milder than any other king-size cigarette, and that's important to me. 
Yes, I agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. And so do more and more smokers every day. Actual figures show extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. The king-size cigarette, which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make it extra mild. You will prefer Fatima's much different, much better flavor. You will agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. The best of all long cigarettes. Sunday, November 24th, 9 a.m. Ben and I contacted the owners of all the shops in the vicinity, but none of them saw or heard anything at the time of the shooting. Officers Brennan and Monkreys interviewed all the regular customers of Albert Kreiber's fur shop. Only three had been in the store on Saturday, but none of them had noticed anything wrong. 11.35 a.m., we spoke to Mrs. Kreiber again, but she could add nothing to her story. Her niece and nephew had been to a football game at the Coliseum in the afternoon and knew nothing had happened until they were telephoned by Officer Brennan. 2.55 p.m. We spoke to all the tenants of the apartment house at 5513 Lexington, which is in the rear of the fur shop. None of them had been home, but the owner told us that he had some men working on the roof of the apartment house at the time of the murder. Through the owner of the durable roof company, we traced the two men who had been working on the roof, and they told us that about 4 o'clock they had seen a blonde dressed in gray slacks enter the parking space in the rear of Kreiber's fur store. They whistled at her, but she paid no attention to them. She got into an Oldsmobile and drove east on Lexington. 7 p.m. We checked in at the office and got word that Albert Kreiber's car had been located in the parking lot at Vermont and 8. We drove down to the location and talked to the parking lot attendant. Well, the car must have come in sometime last night. It probably came in the back way because I don't remember it coming in, and it doesn't have our lot tag on it. Did you work all last night? No, I finished at midnight and started at 10 this morning. I kept waiting for somebody to claim this thing, and... Well, and after supper, I figured it might be stolen, so I phoned the police. It's been sitting here all that time. Are there any keys in it? No, sir. There weren't last night, either. Have you ever seen this particular car before? No, sir. Have you ever seen a blonde woman about 25 wearing gray slacks? You mean hanging around here? Yeah, or in the neighborhood. Yeah, but not today or yesterday. You remember one? Well, yes, sir. Does she drink a lot? Maybe. Well, there's one that hangs out in these bars around here. Once in a while, she comes in the lot. But not lately. When did you see her last? Oh, a couple of weeks ago. Was she with anyone? Yeah, but I don't remember him. <laughs> I've seen her with a lot of different guys. Does she hang around with anybody in particular? Yeah, her husband. Before leaving the parking lot, we pulled the rotor out of the distributor so that nobody could drive the car away. 8, 12 p.m. We called Homicide and asked for more men to canvas the bars in the neighborhood. Ben and I staked out on the car. We sat in our car across the street from the parking lot until midnight. Nobody showed up to claim the car. The streets were almost empty. Our only chance was that the blonde lived in the neighborhood or was in a bar and would sooner or later try to claim the car. 1.53 a.m. Hmm. What rent do you suppose that shepherd girl paid? You got me. 75? I don't know. I bet I pay more than she does. Is that Monkreys? Yeah. Hi, Monk. Hi. Take a look up the street. See that couple? Where? Coming this way. Blonde, gray slacks, fur coat. She's pretty drunk. Where'd you spot her? Turn the corner from Olympic. They've been looking in parking lots. Monk, there's a rear entrance to this lot off the alley. Do you want to cover that? Yeah. Thank you. You see them all right? That's it. Where they walk under that light? Yeah. Pretty drunk. Looks like the same kind of coat, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Stopping. Looking for another parking lot, I guess. Sierra Valley Wine, world's finest muscatel. I'm going into the parking lot. She's not carrying a purse. Well, those coats don't have pockets big enough for a 32 automatic. That stuff sure gets people. All right, let's go. Yeah. We're getting in Kreiber's car. Look, we can't even find the door. She's helping us. You take the other side of the car, will you? Yeah. Come with me. Uh, 
for you. Police officers, can I see your driver's license, please? I ain't got his driver's license. And what's going on? What's your name? Betty Moore. What's it to you? The registration slip on the steering column says Albert Kriber. What's the matter with this car, anyway? Uh, Who's Albert Kriber? Oh, I know who he is. Uh, this guy here. Who's this man? Uh, this guy? He's a friend. That satisfy you? Yeah, friend. Yeah. What do you want in there for? Let me have those keys. Hey. Here you are, Ben. How about going home? There's nothing in there. Let's go. Here's a purse. Yeah. Here's a purse. Give me that. You keep your hands in the wheel. Gun, 32. Kids. It's empty anyway. Really Nothing wrong in that. Do you have a permit to carry it? Yeah, I got a permit. Can I see it? I lost it. Give me those you keys. Keep your hands on that wheel. There's a wallet. Identification cards, Albert Kreiber. Where'd you get these? I don't know. The man's watch, Albert Kreiber, engraved on the back. Who's Albert Kreiber? I don't know, I told you. All right, let's get out of the car. All right, let's push it. that car start? All right, come on. Stand up. You get over there. Where'd you get the fur coat? I bought it. Where? I don't know. Joe, look at her slack. Wine thing. I spilled wine on her. What kind of wine? Muscatel. Muscatel isn't a red wine. It's a white wine. Who's Albert Kreiber? I don't know. This is his wallet. This is his car. Where'd you get him? I don't know. I don't know. Is this the gun you shot him with? Is this the gun you shot him with? <laughs> I was going out with him. He said he'd give me a fur coat. He promised me a watch, and he never gave me one. <laughs> and then we sent a telegram to his wife and everything. He said he'd give me a fur coat and take me out. <laughs> he backed out of me. So you shot him? Sure I did. He promised me the coat. He said I could have any coat in the shop. He promised me. What are you crying for? You got the coat. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On February 27th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 86, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. It's amazing how many long cigarette smokers are changing to extra mild Fatima. Here is the actual report. From coast to coast, extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers. Yes, more and more smokers every day are discovering that Fatima is the king-size cigarette that is extra mild. Extra mild because it contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild, to give it a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. <laughs> Betty Moore was tried and convicted of second-degree murder and received sentence as prescribed by law. She is now serving her term in the state penitentiary at Tehachapi. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Next, here's Sarah Berner in Sarah's Private Caper on NBC. NBC.